Chris, I want to know right off the bat, morale in Cleveland for sports fans right now is at what? Uh, I, I think there are a little, uh, there's panic. I, I think there's panic definitely in the air. Look, nobody thought, look, I picked the Cavaliers in five, but I sure didn't pick them, you know, think that they would it'd go five and the series would be tied at two right now. The, the way they took care of business in those first two games and, and the, the going to Toronto and how they have manhandled him, how Biz McBiombo has become the second coming of the Chamber Mutombo. I, you would I could I wouldn't even imagine this in my wildest dreams. So there's definitely panic in the air because, as you guys know, Cleveland fans have seen this episode a time or two before. And Chris, I hate to bring it up, but the thirty for thirty the other day on Believe Land, it's just it's setting up a situation like this. I was like, oh no, this can't be. Hey, to be continued, right? To be continued. <laughs> hey, all right, you're on the ground there in Cleveland, listening to sports radio, and you're you write about things there. Who from the Cavs is getting the blame, or is no one really getting the blame yet? Well, I, I think there, there hasn't been one individual person to get the blame, but I think it's been collectively. I, I think people are looking at the Cavaliers and saying, hey, you guys got too complacent. You know, you, you strung off 10 straight wins. You guys started believing the hype. And, you know, I wrote about it. I said it. I, I didn't think there was a team in the Eastern Conference that could legitimately give them a threat until the finals came around. And I thought Miami would be the best possible likely scenario to if the Cavaliers were going to have to fight their way to get out the East. And then that didn't happen. And then Toronto came. And then just the way that the way the games transpired in the first two games, you didn't see this coming. You didn't see Toronto having this type of a fight. So with that being said, I think it's overall people are questioning the team. Are they did they fall to com- victim to complacency? Did they start believing the hype? And I think we'll know that answer for sure while the Cavaliers host game five tonight. We're talking to Chris Haynes of the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Chris, last game, Kyrie Irving and J.R. Smith struggled defensively. Is this backcourt good enough defensively? Would they even consider switching late in game, keeping Delavadova in if they're getting torched like they did in game four? Well, no, I think I think what what we have is schemes have had to be modified. LeBron James went out of his way in game four to go and check DeMar DeRozan from the start. Now, that's good. That's all, that's all well and good. But the problem was is that their the Cavaliers' defensive schemes allowed them to switch everything. So all DeMar DeRozan did, all Kyle Lowry did, was use a screen to get the favorable matchup that they wanted, and they went to work. Now, if, if LeBron is going to be on DeMar full time, he has to stick with him. Get, get through Get through screens, tell his guys, hey, no helping. I'm going to get through, bust through. I'm going to stay with this guy. But, look, those two are all-stars. I'm talking about Lowry and DeRozan. There's Matt Biombo. He has been the difference maker. He is the guy that nobody – like, come on. Now, Biz Matt Biombo, he, he, was, he was thought of as a potential bust. Chris, you know, one what, of, what would the Cavs do to have a guy like Biombo instead of Tristan Thompson down low? Wow. Well, look, look, I, I, I will say this. I, I will say this. You look at the body, you know, body of work. Tristan Thompson's body of work is, is way more impressive than Bismack Biombo. But to answer your question right now, come on now, Bismack Biombo is the, <laughs> the is the prototypical uh, blocking um, big man in this in this not just in the league. I'm not just in the in the the league. But I'm talking about these these last four teams that's left right now. He's the best big man out there. You look at what he's doing. He's protecting the rim. He's gobbling up rebounds like crazy. He's giving them a spark with waving the Matumbo finger wag. You know, it, he's bringing life into that team. You can you you would you can account for DeRozan and Lowry, but what Bismack is doing and the way he's outplaying Tristan and Kevin Love, it, it's kind of embarrassing. So you have to think that Tyron Lue has to come up with a scheme to try to get that guy out of the series. Now, what is Tyron Lue going to do about Kevin Love? Uh, you know. He, not playing in the fourth quarter. Which Kevin Love do you expect in Game Five? Well, it's a home game, so I, I would, you know, I would tend to expect that you'll see the Kevin Love that has played well, fairly well in the, in the first ten games or so of this postseason. But with that being said, it's, it's, it's like we were he's reverted back to the Kevin Love of last year, where David Black used to about three or four games to sit him down in the fourth quarter and wouldn't play him at all. And then it's, it's funny because Tyron Lue. The excuse, uh, the excuse that he's using, or why he hasn't put Kevin Love back in the game, he's saying that, hey, you know, Kevin Love was out for a long time. I, I didn't feel it was right for 
for me to put him in, it wouldn't be fair to Kevin Love to put him in down the stretch when he wasn't playing the last five, ten minutes. So I'm like, well, hold on. <laughs> that's, that's what you pay him to do. <laughs> that's right. What you, I, I understand that logic. So I, I get what Ty Lyle was doing, but the, 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 the truth, the simple truth is, he doesn't feel comfortable with Kevin Love down the stretch based off of the first three quarters of Love's production. And, but judging off that, I have to say he's right. Chris, we were talking, the Danettes were talking a little earlier of like, if we were an NBA player, what city we want to play in and what life does a city matter for your lifestyle. If you're a guy like LeBron James living in Cleveland, do you, do you see him out? Do people see him out on the town? Or is he one of those guys, he can't leave the house, he has to have a chef, and he can't roam the streets and drive around? Well, no, he, he gets around. He, he definitely gets around. I, I've seen him. I've seen him out. Um, you know, certain restaurants that I may go to. The thing about with LeBron, this, this is how he gets around. You will see. I, I've been at a couple of restaurants where I will be. I will be sitting down. And then I'll see a security guard <laughs> walk in first, like the Secret Service. I'll, yeah, like the Secret Service. Then you'll see a, a tall guy with a hood over his head, and he's walking closely behind him. And then this, they go to a pathway. It seems like whatever restaurant LeBron chooses to go to, there's like a pathway to this <laughs> big this room way deep in the back, like I guess where mafia meet or something like yeah. that. And he he goes back there, and that's where that's he gets out. So he he doesn't do it the you know obviously the way me you know we we tend to get out, but he he knows how to get out and have a good time. That's awesome. Hey, before we let you go, I want you to finish this statement. If the Cavaliers lose the East to the Raptors, blank. Colossal failure. And and who pays the price? It would. Who pays the price? It would have to. It would be everybody involved. Obviously, LeBron James is being the leader of that team, the face of the franchise. But you would have to start looking at Kyrie, Kevin Love, and the head coach. And then if it gets to that point where I mentioned colossal failure. This offseason, you have to start looking at the trades because it can't go two straight years of you having the highest paid salary team in the league and you come up short again. That, that would be unacceptable. Chris, it's always great to have you on. You do a great job out there. Hopefully uh, you'll keep going at the finals. Uh, take care, guys. Thanks take for care, me. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.